Inyong mapapakinggan ang programang Know Your Bible. Alamin ang inyong Biblia. Hatid sa inyo ng World Radio International and is supported by Church of Christ. Narito na si Brother Daniel Oliva. Magandang umaga po mga kaibigan at mga kapatid. Ito na naman ang programang Alamin ang inyong Biblia. No, your Bible program, matit po sa ng World Radio International through White Sparrow Church of Christ and West Monroe, Louisiana, USA. Inyo po lingkod na nagbibigay ng mensahe, Brother Dan Oliva. Ito na po ang last Sunday of the month of May 2023 at ang ating pong paksa na pinag-uusapan ay pinamagatan ko sa wikang Ingles, Workers of the Flesh. Not in God's kingdom. Ang ating pong teksto ay sa Galatia Kapitulo 5, 19 hanggang 21. O babasahin po natin ito sa wikang Ingles and then of course sa Filipino version pagkatapos pa ng pagbati sa ating mga kapatiran sa buong Pilipinas at of course sa buong mundo. First of all, would like to acknowledge sa World Radio International as our main sponsor for this program uh, both in uh, radio and of course sa uh, YouTube. Uh, this is, of course, uh, can be heard through DWRA GMA Radio here in Baguio, Barangay 92.7 FM every Sunday from 5 to 6 o'clock in the morning. At, of course, nasa YouTube channel din po tayo. We'd like to greet also our partners in Christian World Ministry, especially Brother Terry Dennis, Art Madlaeng, James Kitoriano, John Jeffrey, uh, Deborah Quinones Marcos, and others like also to greet our main uh, sponsor, the uh, elder in charge of uh, this program, Brother or Elder Robert, Robert Abels and my uh, World Radio uh, uh, friend and one who communicates with me is, of course, Beverly Henry Dobbs. Good morning. We'd like also to greet our brothers and sisters all over the Philippines uh, here in Baguio, Baguio and Binguet, uh, La Union, Nueva Ecija and of course Pangasinan and other places of the Philippines, uh, Jansen Mindanao by the Primo Rivera and of course uh, many other parts of the Philippines, Bayombong, Querino, Ilocos, sa lahat po na lugar na inaabot ng signal ng radio, of course dyan sa Abra, kapatid na Miriam Tassis sa San Juan Abra, sa Anda Pangasinan, Joseph and Uriah dito po sa Baguio, brother uh, Carlos Garcia dyan sa Rainbow Subdivision, mga kapatiran sa Tinungdan, Itugon, Binguet, mga kapatiran sa La Trinidad, Baguio Churches, iba-iba pong congregations sa Baguio. I'd like also to greet all brothers and sisters in many places in the whole Philippines. Of course, my sister in Cebu, uh, Evelyn Imperado and the son, Neil, who are taking care of two training schools, the Bear Valley Bible Institute and of course the Philippine Institute of Bible Studies and of course the teachers mga kasama dyan sa Bacolod, Capiz, Iloilo, Aklad, marami pong congregations in the Visayas, both Eastern, Central, Western, Visayas and of course Palawan. Nandi dyan po mga kapatiran din natin. We'd like also to greet our brothers and sisters in South America. Buenos dias todos hermanos hermanos in South America. At napakarami pong mga congregations dyan. Now, let's go to our reading of the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. And of course, kinat ko po ito hanggang verse 21 lang. But later on, I will read to you the Tagalog version. According to the Apostle Paul, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are this, adultery, fornication, and many others. Uh, he mentioned he'd been... Uh, worship of idols, and of course, uh, so many others there. And they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Galatians chapter 
verse 19 to 21. So sa pagsulat po ni Apostol Pablo sa mga Kristiyano sa Galacia, yun po ang sinabi niya doon sa Kapitulo 5, talatang 19 hanggang 21. Now let's go to the Tagalog version of Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21, which is actually the more complete uh, statement or reading of the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. Hindi makakailang mga gawa ng laman. Pangangalan niya, karimare-marim na pamumuhay, kahalayan, pagsamba sa Diyos-Diyosan, pangkukulam, pagkapuot, pagkagalit, paninibugho, kasakiman, pagkabahabagi, pagkampi-kampi, pagkainggit, paglalasing, walang taros na pagsasaya, at iba pang tulad nito. Minabalaan ko kayo, tulad nung una, hindi tatanggapin sa kaharian ng Diyos ang gumagawa ng gayong mga bagay. So, yun po ang Tagalog version ng Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 and 21. So, our discussion this morning will be on the subject, workers of the place. Workers of the place means they, people who practice the works of the flesh. The word pleasure is actually a sort of a, a symbolism which refers to the works of the flesh, the works of darkness, the evil works in this world. So, sabi ng Pastor Paul, the workers of the flesh are not in the kingdom of God or they are not in the kingdom of God. Now, let's go to our introduction. The general and current trend today worldwide is the practice of live-in relationship even among God's people. Pag sinabi natin God's people, even among members of the Churches of Christ and even among other religious groups. Nangyayari po ito worldwide. Buong mundo, mayro pong nangyayaring tinatawag nilang live-in relation. And of course, if you read the Bible, it is called fornication. Sa Tagalog, may nakalagay doon, pangangalun niya. Alright? So, marami pong terminology dyan. Now, the world seems to have accepted this modern practice for even the rich and the famous are doing this. So, ang mundo, mukhang tinanggap na yung gawain na ito o practice na ito sapagkat pati na yung mga mayayaman, pati na yung mga tanyag na tao ay ginagawa ang bagay na ito. So, what does the Bible say about this modern practice? even among God's people. Ano pong sinasabi ng Biblia tungkol sa bagay na ito, yung tinatawag nating live-in relationship kahit among God's people. So let's read the Bible and let's find out what God says about this. For sinabi ni Cristo, 1.8.32 Malalaman ninyo ang katotohanan at ang katotohanan ang siyang magpapahayag at magpapahalaya sa inyo. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So our approach in this particular lesson, brothers and sisters, will be about five, or rather four. Number one, let's go to the definition of live-in relationship or fornication. Sama na po natin dyan yung adultery and divorce. What are the reasons this modern practice became acceptable and tolerated even among God's people? Number three, What are some statistical results of this living relationships? And number four, what is God's judgment or penalty for the so-called workers of the flesh? So, yun po yung ating pag-aaralan. Sa bangang ito, bibigyan natin ng kahulugan ang sinasabi natin live-in relationship kasama na yung adultery and divorce. Ano po ang mga dahilan kung bakit tinatanggap ng buong sanglibutan ang gawain na ito? Ano po yung mga resulta, mga statistika na ang tinatawag nating live-in relationship? Ano po yung results? Ano po yung mga pangyayari na nagaganap o resulta ng ganitong klasing relasyon? And number four, what is God's judgment and penalty for these workers of the flesh? Anong sinasabi ng Biblia na parusa o tinatawag nating judgment? Paghukom sa mga tao na gumagawa sa ganitong mga bagay. So, yun po yung ating pag-aaralan sa magang ito, sapagat napakahalaga po ang paksa na ito. Now, let's go to our discussion. 
Let's first go to the definitions of live-in relationship or the Bible calls that in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 as fornication. Nandito po yung term na adultery pero yung divorce wala po doon. We have already discussed that uh, in other subjects before. Now, live-in relationship is simply or so-called fornication is simply people living together as husband and wife without getting married. Ang live-in relationship po, ang tinasabi sa Biblia, or fornication, ay isang pagsasama sa loob ng isang bubong, bahay, ng isang lalaki at isang babae na hindi po nakaraan o nakaranas ng tinatawag nating kasal. Kasal sa simbahan o kasal sa west o kasal pa man kanino. So, hindi sila nakaroon ng tinatawag na legal contract para sila ay mamuhay na parang na mag-asawa habang buhay. So, walang ganon. Adultery is sometimes defined also as illicit or immoral relationship between married couples. So, ito additional information na po ito. Ang adultery sa Biblia o sinasawag lang pakikiapid sometimes ay isa pong illegal at immoral na relasyon sa mga may asawa. Halimbawa, lalaki, may iba pang babae. At babae, meron ding ibang lalaki. So, yun tinatawag po ng adultery. Whether it's committed by the woman or by the husband. But here in the Philippines, our family code, kapag ang isang lalaki may ibinahay ng isang babae, ang tawag po sa ating uh, batas, tinatawag nila pong concubinage from the word concubine o mistress. Alam natin sa Biblia, meron pong isang tao, isang hari ng Israel, meron siyang 700 wives, pitong daang asawa, at 300 concubines or mistresses. And of course, kilala natin yan. Yung po si Haring Solomon. Concubinage is sometimes or defined as a married man is living with a woman, not his wife. So, kung may isang lalaki, may kalibin siya na hindi niya asawa. Ang tawag nila po doon ay concubine or mistress. Sa terminology ng uh, Pilipinas, tawag nila kapit. <laughs> Now, adultery When a married woman has a sexual relationship with a man, not her husband. So, yun po yung pakikiapid na sinasabi sa Biblia. Adultery, when a married woman has a sexual relationship with a man and not her husband. So, yun po yung pakikiapid. Now, divorce, of course, wala po sa Pilipinas, although pinag-uusapan na nila ngayon, divorce or divorcio, the, the couple becomes separated and can remarry according to one's country or law. So, sa iba pang bansa, maliban sa Pilipinas at Vatican City, naghihiwalay yung mag-asawa, tinatawag lang divorcio, it's a legal remedy, and they become separated, and both of them can get married to another man or woman. So, yun po yung ginagawa nila sa ibang bansa. Pero sa Pilipinas, wala pa po yan. In the Philippines, the practice po dito sa ating bansa ay tinatawag nilang annulment. Annulment of marriage at ito po yung sinasabi nilang pagpapawalang visa sa kasal. Nang ibig sabihin, parang hindi kayo nakasal. Hindi talaga nakasal from the beginning. So in other words, yung tinatawag nilang terminology sa legal parlance, void ab initio. Null and void mula sa simula. In other words, parang walang kasal o walang kasal na nangyari. So yun po yung practice sa Pilipinas, yung tinatawag nilang annulment, pagpapawalang visa, So, pag unapa walang bisa, pwede mag-asawa yung lalaki, pwede ring mag-asawa ang babae. So, yun pong practice sa Pilipinas. Now, legal separation is allowed in the Philippines, but neither party can remarry. So, ang nangyayari po, ang uh, tinatanggap at ginagawa sa Pilipinas, yung tinatang nilang legal separation, pwede maghiwalay, pero ang lalaki o babae ay hindi po pwede mag-asawa. Hiwalay lang sila ng tiraan. Uh, Pag-asawa pa rin sila, pero hindi lang sila nagsasama. Po yun yung tinatawag nating legal separation. And of course, the Bible talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12 and 13. Doon po sa Corinth, sa Corinto, sa Grisya, panahon na Apostol Pablo, meron po mga Kristiyano, nag-asawa ng hindi Kristiyano. At merong babaeng Kristiyan, ang asawa niya hindi Kristiyano, meron ding lalaki Kristiyano, yung asawa niya hindi. So sabi ni Apostol Pablo, if The unbelieving party would like to depart. Let him or her do it. 
Pero sabi ni Apostol Pablo, kung ang lalaki na hindi membro, pwedeng iwalay niya ang kanyang asawang membro ng iglesia, pwede yun. Pero hindi sila pwedeng mag-asawa. In fact, sabi ni Apostol Paul, you can still reconcile and stay together as man and wife. Pero nangyayari yun, even during the time of the Apostol Paul, nakakaroon po ng hiwalayan, tinatawag nilang legal separation sa ating terminology, nakakaroon po ng ganon. And of course, it's mentioned in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12 and 13, wherein ang nangyayari, mayroong membro ng iglesia o Christian, nag-asawa na hindi Christian, o bago sila naging Christiano, mag-asawa na sila, pero yung isa naging Christiano, yung isa hindi. So sabi ni Apostle Pablo, he recognizes the idea there of separation, but he does not give permission for any of them to get married. Of course, dinidiscuss niyan sa Romans chapter 7, verse 1 to 3, na ang marriage law or the contract between husband and wife is for life. Kaya sabi niya doon, if the husband is still alive, the man or the woman cannot get married. But when the man dies, the woman who is married to the man can already get married. Of course, sabi niya, Pastor Pablo yan, sa Romans chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. Now, let's go to the second part of our lesson. What are the reasons why live-in relationship became acceptable and tolerated even among God's people? Pag sinabi natin God's people, even among so-called Christians, professing Christians, sabi nila, Kristiyano sila, membro sila ng iglesia, but they are practicing live-in relationship. So ano po ang mga dilan kung bakit tanggap ng ating lipunan, ng ating susyudad, and it's being tolerated even among God's people. Number one reason, well, the rich and the famous are doing it in the Philippines, in the USA, in other places of the world. So yung mga mayayaman, mga pamuso, mga sikat, mga tanyang na tao ay ginagawa nila yan sa Pilipinas, sa Amerika, sa ibang bansa. So, sabi ng mga ordinaryong tao, ba't hindi natin gawin? Even among politicians, business people, and other moneyed persons, ginagawa ito. So, mga politiko, mga negosyante, mga mayayamang tao, ginagawa ito. Hindi sila nagpapakasal. In fact, in the Philippines, brothers and sisters, I will not mention you the names, there were two President of the Philippines who had legal wives and also mistresses. May mga asawa na sila, pero may mistresses pa rin sila. May concubines pa rin sila. Meron ganyan sa Pilipinas. I will not mention the names anymore. I think you know who those people are. Now, the, the question is, why is this accepted and tolerated even among God's people? As I said kanina, The word God's people means members of the churches of the Lord, churches of Christ. Ang yayari po, even among other religious groups, hindi lang churches of Christ. Of course, pag sinabi kong God's people, members of the Lord's church or churches of Christ. Those involved attend worship services of the church and are not censured and disciplined. Yung mga membro ng iglesia, nag attend sila nakikipagsamba pag araw ng linggo o sabran, sometimes Wednesday pero walang sumasansala at nagsasabi mali yung ginagawa ninyo Mama, mar maray natatakot yung mga miyembro ayaw sabihan sila so nangyari si service sila nag sila ng pagsamba pero tuloy-tuloy yung gawain nila na nagsasama na hindi kasal now the matter has become complicated with the practice of same-sex marriage and relationship at naging mas komplikado ngayon sapagkat mayroon ang tinatawag na same-sex marriage relationship. Of course, sa Pilipinas hindi pa puligal yan, pero nangyayari lalaki sa babae nagsasama babae sa babae nagsasama at walang nagsasansala, walang nagdedisiplina, walang nagsasabi, mali ang ginagawa ninyo. God's people refer, of course, to the so-called Christian groups. Kasama po ang Churches of Christ or Churches of the Lord kasi may mga pangyayaring ganyan. No money yet to spend for elaborate wedding. Hindi sila napapakasali agad. Sabi nila, wala pa silang pera. Gusto nilang 
bongga yung kasal. Gusto nilang elaborate yung kasal. Gusto nila may mga ninong, may mga ninang, may kainan sa restaurant o sa hotel. So, one of the reasons why they don't get immediately married because they want something na bongga. Gusto nilang elaborate ang kasal. May mga handaan, may mga ninong at minang, may mga gandang kasuotan. Yun po ang isang dahilan kung bakit hindi sila nagpapakasal agad. Another reason, probably the last, it's easier to break our there is no written contract. One of the other reasons why people would like to have a so-called live-in relationship, it is easier to break as there is no contract yet. Madali pong walain o balain, bali walain. Madaling alisan o sirain yung kontrata, sapagkat yung, yung arrangement na yun, sapagkat wala namang written contract. It's more of verbal. Usapan lang, oh, maglibin tayo, kung okay tayo, maray magpapakasal tayo. So, yun po ang one of the advantages, disadvantages, and one of the reason why people don't get married. So, nabanggit ko yan. Mga pito po yan. Now, let's go to the third part of our lesson. What are some statistical results of live-in relationship? Ano po yung mga resulta, mga pangyayari dahil sa tinatawag nating live-in relationship, pagsasama na walang kasal? Well, uh, let's, let me see a sort of a survey. Uh, medyo late na po ito. Sabi doon ng isang recent U.S. News and World Report say that 10% of girls have lost their virginity at the age 13. Uh, ito po ay balita sa U.S. I don't know kung ganito rin po sa Pilipinas. But the rest of Jewish News and World Report say that 10% of girls in United States and other countries, I don't know, in the Philippines, have already lost their virginity at the age of 13. So 13 pa lang, hindi na po sila uh, tinatawag na berhin. May kamuha nga na sila sa tinatawag na relasyon bilang mag-asawa. As a result of this finding, many have contracted uh, diseases. Tinatawag nilang STD, sexual transmitted diseases. There is also an increase in teenage pregnancies. Of course, dito sa Pilipinas, nangyayari yan. There is also an increase of abortions, school dropouts, and even suicide. So, ano pong resulta ng tinatawag nilang sort of sort of live-in relationship, sweetheart relationship, ano po ang mga nangyari, nakakaroon po ng mga kasakit. Tinatawag nila sa English na sexually transmitted disease or STD. Kakaroon po ng maraming tinatawag na teenage pregnancies. Nakakaroon po ng mga abortion. Kakaroon po ng pagliban sa klase. Hindi na po nagpapatuloy sa pag-aaral. And of course, worse, some of them commit suicide. Mayro pong nangyari dito sa Siyudad ng Baguio, uh, two or three months ago. Pakamatay po isang teenage girl, lumundag mula sa tinatawag nating uh, overpass, lumundag siya gabi, matay. Siyempre, yun po ay true story dito sa Siyudad ng Baguio. Ano pang uh, statistical result? Not counting the mental anguishes of parents, school officials, parents, and help person. So, marami po ang result. Ano pong nangyayari? Of course, meron tinatawag na mental anguish. Pag-iisip, nag-iisip yung mga magulang, pati na rin yung mga opisyalis ng eskulahan, pati ang mga health persons, mga nurses, mga doctors, they are also concerned about what's happening as a result of the so-called live-in relationship. Number four, spendings of the government have also increased on health care, social welfare, and such like. So, pati yung Gobyerno, through the DSWD and other agencies, gumagastos din ang ating pamalaan sa healthcare, social welfare, and others. Especially kung may mga bata. At dito po sa Sudan ng Baguio, sa Pilipinas, may mga instances po na may natatagpo ang mga batang tinatapon sa pasuraan. Ang iba namatay, ang iba pa buhay. So, iyan po ay mga true story na nangyayari dito sa ating bansa. And of, and of course, I think, I also believe it happens in other countries. Number five, moral, physical, and spiritual damages have been noted on those who live in in their adolescent years. Ano po yung resulta? Mayroong moral damages. Uh, moral 
Dami diyang ibig sabihin yung kanilang moralidad, kanilang pamumuhay, pati katawan, apektado. Pati na rin, of course, ang spiritual na pamumuhay nila, apektado, sahel nagsimula na silang maglibid habang sila ay mga teenagers pa lamang. So, yung mga lalaki, hindi na nakapag-aral, pati yung mga babae, hindi na nakapag-aral. So, kung misan, age 13, 14, 16, may mga anak na, at siyempre, mahirapan yan sa pagpapalaki ng mga bata, maliban na lang kung tulungan sila ng kanilang mga magulang at iba pang mga taong concern. Number four and the last part of our lesson on the so-called live-in relationship. Our subject under discussion is workers of the flesh are not in the kingdom of God. Ang mga gumagawa ng mga mahalay na bagay, makalamang bagay, ay wala po sa kaharian ng ating Panginoon Diyos. Number four and the last, God's judgment and penalty for workers of the flesh. Sabi doon sa Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, the works of the flesh are manifest. Ang gawain ng laman ng tao ay malinaw. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 21, sabi ni Apostle Paul, those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Ang mga gumagawa ng mga bagay na ito, ay hindi nila mamanahin ang kaharian ng Diyos. And of course, here in the Philippines or in the world, they can be members of the Lord's Church. But what the Apostle Paul is talking here in Galatians 5.21 is inheriting the kingdom of God in heaven. Pwede sila maging member dito sa iglesia, sa loob ng iglesia dito sa mundo. But finally, their final destiny, they will not be part of the kingdom of God in heaven. Of course, many are not afraid for the following reasons. Marami po mga tao hindi takot. I don't know kung hindi takot o baka sabi nila marami silang dilan. So, what are the reasons why some people seem not to care? Parang wala sa kanila. Well, sabi nila, number one, God is merciful. God is forgiving. Not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. So, sabi ni Apostol Pedro, ang Panginoon ay maawain. Ang Panginoon ay mapagpatawad at ayaw na na may mawala at gusto niya na magsisi ang lahat ng tao. Tama mo naman po yan. Pero kung yan ang dahilan mo, hindi mo alam kung kailan ka kukunin ng Panginoon. Sapagkat sinasabi naman ng Hebrews 9.27, It is appointed for man once to die and after that, the judgment. And even today when you are still alive, sabi ni Jesus Christ sa Mark 6.16, He who does not believe shall be condemned. Ngayon pa lang, na hindi ka na naniniwala, nakalaan na yung penalty o parusa sa'yo, even when you are still alive. So therefore, repentance, sabi ng iba, can come later on, before death. Of course, we do not know kung kailan tayo mamamatay. At hindi rin natin alam kung kailan babalik ang ating Panginoon sa Kristo because Christ will return at any time and the world will not know when Christ is coming back. In fact, in Luke chapter 18, verse 8, sabi doon, Christ said, When the Son of Man shall return, will He find faith on earth? Sa pagbabalik daw ng Panginoong sa Kristo, ng anak ng tao, dito sa mundo, makakatagpo kaya siya ng mga taong naniniwala at sumasampalataya pa sa Kanya. Parang ibig sabihin, iilan na lang ang sasampalataya sa Panginoong. Katulad ng tayo ng Noah, How many people were saved during the time of Noah and God sent the flood on earth? Only eight people. At alam natin kung ilan ang tao nung panahon ni Noe, we do not know actually. Sabi mo na lang million. Pero ang naligtas, walo lang. Now in the law of Moses, brothers and sisters, a couple caught in adultery were being killed. Ayon sa Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10, pag may mag-asawa, at nahuli ang isa o dalawa sila na nangangalun niya o nakikiapid. In actual, ang batas po sa Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 20%, ay ilalabas sila, dalawa sila, lakit baba, at pagbabatuhin sila hanggang mamatay. That's why during the time of Christ's ministry, nang dala yung mga pariksyon ng isang babae, Rabbi, what will we do with this woman who were caught in adultery? Uh, gusto nilang babatuhin. Pati si Kristo ay babato. O sabi naman ng Panginoon sa Kristo, yung walang kasalanan, yun ang maunang bumato at pumatay sa babae. Wala namang nangyari. Kahit, 
sapagkat sila ay makasalanan na lahat. Number four reason, God is good and severe at the same time. According to the book of Romans chapter 11 verse 22, Behold, the goodness and the severity of God. So ang God, ang God, Diyos natin, mabait. Pero hindi lang siya mabait. Stricto rin po siya. According to Romans 11, 22. Behold the goodness and the severity of God, sabi ni Apostle Pablo. And of course, we know from the history of the Old Testament at marami pang cases na God can be severe. God can be harsh. Like Herod, he was making a speech and he did not give glory to God. Immediately, God killed him through an angel. According to the book of Deuteronomy 4.24 and of course Hebrews 12.29 sabi ng Hebrew writer, God is a consuming fire. Hindi po literal na fire o pwede literal na fire because when Christ will come, He will be coming with His angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. So ayon sa Revelation chapter 21 verse 8, one of the last verses that we will read in our uh, main discussion Sabi ng Hebrews, or rather, Revelation 21, verse 8, Apocalypse 21, 8, All the unbevenable, all the whoremongers and liars, their part shall be in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and prison. So lahat ng mga masasamang gawain, lahat ng mga sinungaling, lahat ng mga gumagawa ng mga hindi damang bagay, kasama na po dun yung live-in relationship, Saan sila pupunta? Sabi ng writer ng Hip, uh, Revelation 21 verse 8, Apocalypse 21 8, Their part shall be in the lake of fire which burns with fire and brimstone. Doon po sila sa lawa ng apoy na of course yung apoy hindi na mamatay at kasama po yung asopri. Gaano kasakit, gaano kainit. Saka na lang natin malalaman pero alam natin na pag tayo ay napaso dito, napakasakit po ng mapaso at masunog of course. Mayro bang nabuhay na nasunog? Kung talagang sunog ka, hindi ka na mabubuhay. So sa ating pong pagtatapos mga kapatid at mga kaibigan sa ating leksyon na pinamagatan kong Workers of the flesh are not in God's kingdom. God's people are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Sabi po ni Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 and of course the other verses. Sabi ng Panginoon, you are the light of the world. Kayo ang liwanag o ilaw ng mundo. Kayo rin ang asin ng sandibutan, ang ibig sabihin ng ilaw, tumitingin sa mga Kristiyano, sa mga anak ng Diyos, ang buong mundo, ng liwanag. At kung wala yung liwanag na yun, nasa kadiliman pa rin ang ating kamunduan, ang ating mundo. Kayo rin ang salt, asin. Anong ibig sabihin ng asin? You preserve the life of others, you also give flavor to the life of others. So Christians should give flavor, it should preserve the spiritual lives of people here on earth. Matthew 5.16 So ano sabi ni Apostle Pablo? Galatians 6 verse 10 As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially to them of the household of God. As we have opportunity, sabi ni Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 Let us do good unto all men, especially to them of the household of God. So habang may pagkakataon tayo, sabi ni Apostle Pablo, gawin ninyo ang mabuti sa lahat ng tao especially sa mga anak ng Diyos sa pamilya ng Panginoon ano ibig sabihin nan? ibig sabihin advise natin counsel them talk to them and tell them what the Bible says about the relationship what is the punishment what are the rewards if they will follow God if you are not yet in Christ brothers and sisters we are inviting you come to Him for Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew 11, 28 to 30, sabi ng Panginoon, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly and heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So kung kayo pa hindi pa Kristiyano, hindi pa kayo naging membro ng Iglesia ng Panginoong Yeso Christ, so we're inviting you, believe in Jesus Christ, and be saved today. Believe he or rep- believes and is baptized shall be saved, sabi ng Panginoon sa Mark 16, 16. And of course, we are also encouraging you, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, sabi ng Pastor Pablo, Acts chapter 2, 38. 
And of course, kailan ang time of salvation? Many people would like to postpone their salvation. But sabi ni Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2, Now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. Hindi po bukas because we do not know tomorrow and we do not know what is our life. Christ may come and the Lord might already end the life that we are having here on earth. And finally, sabi ng uh, Apostle Pablo, Ikalawang Thessalonica chapter 1, verse 8, When Christ will return, He will take vengeance on them who do not know God. Yung hindi kumikilala sa Diyos, yung hindi sumusunod sa kanyang kagustuhan, kumikilala sa kanyang bilang kapangyarihan, makapangyarihan na Diyos. And finally, God also will take vengeance on those who do not obey the gospel of Christ, ang hindi sumusunod sa Ibanghelya ni Kristo, na siya po nating ipinangaral dito sa radyo, pinangaral sa YouTube, at kasama na po yung mga kapatiran natin sa buong mundo, sa buong Pilipinas, na ipinangaral ang salita ng katotohanan galing sa iyong salita, Panginoon. Manalangin po tayo sa ating pagtatapos. Ama po namin banal, marami pong salamat sa inyong pagtulong sa amin sa paggawa ng leksyon na ito. Marami pong salamat sa mensahe na no, Panginoon ang mga nakarinig na kapanahon nito ay isipin nila ang kanilang relasyon sa inyo at kanilang relasyon din sa kanilang sarili kung siya baga, sila ay sumusunod sa inyong kautusan pinapanalangin namin Panginoon na sila ay maging maniwala sa inyo pagsisiya ng kanila ang kasalanan o pangmahugasan, pangpabautismo sa kapatawaran ng ilang kasalanan at sa pagtanggap ng banal na Espiritu ito pong aming dalangin Umihingi pa rin ang kapatawaran sa aming mga kasalanan habang pinapatawad din namin ang mga nagkulang at nagkasala sa amin. Ito pong aming hiling at dalangin sa pangalan ng anak na Seso Kristo na aming tagabalitas. Amen. Napakinggan ang programang Know Your Bible. Alamin ang inyong Biblia. Hatid sa inyo ng World Radio International and is supported by Church of Christ.